I wish I was. I wish I wasn't. I was gonna. Oh, make, I'm gonna make that joke in my video. Like, I didn't realize how tall you are. Like, <laughs> why don't you have a cameraman, Matt? No, I don't know. I can't find anybody to use a camera and walk on stilts. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm here with John Maxwell. We're doing a collaboration video like I promised. And you know, for this video, I didn't want to do anything scripted. Uh, really, there's no preset things that John and I are going to talk about except for the new bikes, basically. So I'm having to slouch down here because John's so damn short. <laughs> Actually, I'm the Jolly Green Giant, so yeah, I'm the one that has a problem here. But anyways, yeah, we're just out here right now just talking about bikes and stuff. So I thought I'd just basically shoot this and uh, give you guys kind of both of our opinions on everything. So we're just going to kind of go around and look at some bikes and stuff. I think we're going to start here with the bike that's new that everybody kind of I think is going to have the most interest in, the FXDR here. So we're going to go over to the, the FXDR and just kind of give our thoughts about it and stuff. Uh, you know, personally, you know, I, I love it. It's like a drag bike style bike. Um, but something that I was very interesting and I'm going to come out with a video that um, I got Ben Wright, one of the head engineers, to talk to me about this bike. One of the things that I thought was very interesting is the lean angle is actually a little bit better than that of the Fat Bob. The Fat Bob being pretty much arguably the best performing all around Harley Davidson they make right now. But the, the FXDR is definitely up there in the performance category and it's got a lot of traits and characteristics about it. Um, but I'm glad we have John here because I think he's going to kind of give us more of that mechanics and mechanical uh, aspect or side of, of every bike here. Um, first thoughts, John, what, what, do you, what do you think about the bike? I think they've finally done something, a, a true performer. The weight savings, the new swing arm, the Screaming Eagle muffler, not the stock muffler. I'll go pick on some motor company employee about that later. But <laughs> they're, they really have saved weight on a what they want to be a performer rather than put out a overweight, you know, yeah. slouch of a machine. So I'm excited to ride it. Me too. I think that's a big thing is I can't wait to do my first, my test ride video. I'm sure John's going to do a test ride video as well. So Absolutely. check this out as well. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of parts on this bike that are unique to just this bike. You know, the intake, the exhaust, like John mentioned, uh, it has the same 34 degree angle rake that the breakout has, but Ben was telling me that the, the neck, angle is a little bit different and so it kind of uh, lends to a little bit better handling it's got the big 240 millimeter rear tire and i know a lot of people are probably thinking what's that fat of a tire doing on the back of a bike that is supposedly for performance um, there's there's other things in the geometry the swing arm and things that lend to more of a performing conducive bike so i'm told but We'll have to that's part of the rake change and stuff. I think if, you, if you've ridden a 17 and earlier breakout versus the 18 and later breakout, totally different handling machines, same tire sizes. It, okay. they're, they're really doing stuff with, with the geometry of the bikes. Okay, that's good input. Check out how the rear end This one doesn't do it like, quite like the one on the kickstand. Or maybe I'm just not as heavy as that fella. I watched one guy sit down on it and it was just like, uh, there's some sag there. Yeah, something I know they, they changed too is this, there's two heights of the shock on these soft tails. You've got the, the shock that comes like on the fat bob and the heritage and then you've got the shorter shock that comes on all, all the other bikes. This is the shorter of those two shocks, so I'm told. But again, the, the angle of the frame puts it in, in a little bit different angle to make it more of a uh, performance conducive bike. Of course, you got the inverted front end as well, dual disc brakes. This is a 19 inch front wheel. So yeah, pretty excited about this one. As far as the other soft tails, and, and one of the things I wanted to talk to John about was after working on the soft tails, the new 2018 soft tail platform, um, hands on, working on them, doing services on them. What's kind of been your overall opinion about the bike so far? They are, uh, if you've watched my channel before, you know that one of my pet peeves is working on a soft tail to do pretty much anything. So this soft tail is actually is a little easier. The battery compartment is, it takes some getting used to, but apart from that, it really is, it, it's a lot easier. Look, simple things like the tank, uh, if you've ever had to pull the tank on your own bike, the crossover tube, that's gone for 18 and later soft tails. It seems like a minor thing, but when you're really working on something, trying to do something quick before you hit the 
hit the road for the weekend, it, it makes a big difference. I don't know if you guys kind of have the, uh, the Dyna craze that we've had in California, but there was a kind of a big pushback when the new 18 Softails came out about, oh, you know, they got rid of our favorite bike, what's Harley doing? Um, what's kind of been your opinion as far as the perception of customers and, and the perception that you had before you rode the 2018 Softails and then after you rode them as far as you know, how, how does this new frame compare to the old like Dyna frame? Uh, well, the after riding one, you, the you have to ride the newer Softail for sure. I think apart from the the Dyna Lowrider Special, that's probably the only Dyna that I, I would be holding on to, honestly. Um, now our area is not like. California with the Dyna craze by any means and it was kind of coming like I've just started installing t-bars and things like that 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 look does not have the same look as the new soft tail at all so you feel like that style maybe wasn't as prevalent but you're seeing that being adopted more and more in your area oh absolutely for sure the um with for the looks not for the same like lane splitting capabilities that, that you guys actually use it for here it's just you know social media has officially um, changed people's opinion on that look and, and it's cool i think uh the first the first time i rode an 18 soft tail down the highway it was just as smooth as riding a touring bike down the down the interstate nice that was kind of my opinion too and it's it's funny because We've sold a lot of these bikes to people that would otherwise be Dyna riders. Uh, a lot of the guys that were diehard, super glide, street bob, and they're, they're digging them. So yeah, I can't say enough good things about getting a year of feedback from people that have actually bought the 2018 Softails, just how good they really, they ride. And the power to weight ratio is really good. The lean angle is better, which is always nice. Um, another thing that I talk about a lot is just the heat dissipation. The Milwaukee 8s with uh, the precision oil cooling system, as Harley Davidson calls it. it, it works really well, so less heat. You know, one of the things that I love, I love the Lowrider S, but one of the things that I felt were kind of one of its faults is that that bike gets really, really hot, especially when you're in stop and go traffic. That, that 110 uh, twin cam gets really, really hot. So the Milwaukee 8s definitely run a lot cooler. John, let me get your opinion on, on the Sport Glide. This was a, a mid-model year release. What's kind of your, your take on this bike and, and how have you enjoyed it and what's kind of your perception on this one? All of all of Harley's dual, the soft tail convertible, the switchback, all those, I've always really liked them for their functionality. I think Harley riders and functionality don't always go together though or something because they just never seem to sell that well. Granted, I like it okay, but did I rush out and buy one? No. And if the model doesn't sell, then the model doesn't last. But it is back this year with new color options, so I'm excited to see. Maybe it'll do better. This kinetic green, is that what they're calling this one? I, I think so, yeah. Yeah, so yeah that's kind of... The fact that they have matched the fairing to the actual color of the bike instead of the fairing just always being black on this particular model, it looks better. Maybe that's part of what was holding somebody up last year, so... Yeah, what, what are, just out of curiosity, what are some of the better selling models in the Softail family at your dealership? I think we've sold probably more Fat Bobs and Heritage Classics than any other. Handful of breakouts. Okay. I don't know, I, if we've sold a Lowrider, we've sold a Lowrider. That one did not interesting off at all. It's interesting to learn as I talk to different people at the show, the different kind of like de demographics and, and customer preferences. At my dealership, the Street Bob kills it and the Lowrider does really well as well. The Heritage was kind of uh, not one of the better performers. So yeah, it, it's, it, it's interesting. My camera work is going to be freaking terrible on this video. I can already, a, I can already tell. We have a lot of overlaid yeah. stuff. We're going to be using all the B-roll yes, yes, I have. <laughs> Uh, do you guys do a lot of trike stuff or not really? We do. Um, our, our demographic is um, older, um, diehard touring, touring riders is a lot of our demographic. We do, we're a military base where I'm at. So the younger rider is oftentimes on their way in or out. You know, they don't stick around for a long time. So 
we don't see a lot of um, continued parts and stuff. You know, they're there for a year, two years, and they're they're gone again. But so Harley did make some pretty significant changes in the braking system this year, and John, I'm sure, knows a little bit more about it than well, a lot more than than I do about it. Um, can you comment on that at this point? A little bit about what they've done and like kind of what the, the benefits are to people? Benefits will be uh, determined later. I'm, I'm really curious to ride it and see how it feels. It's one of those things, well, first, what we're talking about is the trike now has traction control and ABS. All those things have been lacking from the trike for, I mean, touring bikes got ABS in 2008, the trike came out in 2009, so they're, it's way overdue to have this on the trike. They are Brembo calipers now, which is what touring bikes have run since 08 with the introduction of ABS. It's a reflex braking system, just like what's on the touring bike. It's actually a lot of really big changes, and for some reason, not, it, it was like a small little bit of the show yesterday. But I'm interested to see how it works. The controls are changed, so you can turn traction control on and off on your left-hand control module. Um, the reverse button had to move because the old reverse button is where traction control is. Um, I'm curious to see what the feedback is once people are riding it. Um, in the beginning of ABS, people were like, ah, it's a motorcycle, no motorcycle needs ABS. And now there are a lot of people that wouldn't buy a motorcycle that doesn't have ABS. It, that's one of the most common price point complaints I hear on my channel is all these things should be standard, but then not cost so much money. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I know in some places like in Europe, uh, ABS, it, it's the law that motorcycles have to have ABS in some countries. So ABS is here to stay. Uh, and I know there's a lot of Harley owners that kind of resist uh, change in technology, but ABS is one of those technologies that's, that's good and it's integrated well, where it doesn't take away from the aesthetics of the bike. So I think it's here to stay. And you know, I'm, I'm anxious like John is to ride the new trike and kind of test it out for myself with all the, the traction control. You guys sell a lot of these bikes at your place, at the oh, yeah. trikes? Absolutely. Being um, being military town, we have a lot of um, older riders. Some of them, um, you know, retired military that don't ever leave the Columbus area. Lots of guys that physically need to ride a trike. So it's nice that they're able to continue riding without a conversion kit or things like that. They get a brand new bike with warranty and now with all the amenities that a touring bike has. Yeah. Very cool. All right, let's move on, guys. So all the specials this year have, and I'm talking about the Road Glide Special, Road King Special, and Street Glide Special, have the 114 cubic inch engine in them now. Uh, and the standards still have it, have the 107 in there. And then your Limited and your Road Glide Ultra have the 114 as well. One of the main questions I get is people are always asking me, okay, is the 114 worth the money and how much extra additional power can I expect from the 114 over the 107? What's kind of yeah, your, your opinion and take on that? Yeah. There's no replacement for displacement, so you're going to get more power out of it. Um, I don't know exact numbers, but after, we can probably overlay a, a chart right here. There's, there's lots of those here at the dealership. <laughs> yes, there are. But, um, there is a substantial, and the thing about the replacement for displacement, idea is that at every range of RPM, you have more power. It's not like a cam where you're sacrificing some power at the low end to gain it at the top end. Bigger motors make bigger power from start to finish. So, and the Milwaukee 8 is one of my favorite parts of it is it's making power, big, big power at 3000 RPM where people actually ride, where your twin cam made big numbers at 4,500, five grand. Well, on a dyno sheet, that's awesome. It's a big number, but an actual riding through town, you, most of your riders don't ever see 4,500 RPM. Do you think riders that have a 107 should feel bad that they bought a 2018 model year, the 107, and now the 114's out? Uh, I get that every year. People say, man, Matt, I wish you would have told me that the next year they're gonna come out with a 114. Um, and you know what? My opinion, guys, if you wait until they're not gonna come out with anything else, then you'll never buy a bike. Yeah. So in the 18 model year, they blacked them all out with the stretch bags and everything. And all the 17 guys were like, wow, I wish I would have known they would have blacked them out. But you know, I don't know if 
this really is coming down to a, co a question for John or not, but uh, <laughs> but I, 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 I'm exactly with you on that. I think that. I mean, Harley obviously is going to change stuff every year, and every year you're going to want the new thing. That's kind of that's the point. That's what car manufacturers and cell phone companies and everything else. If you stay stagnant, then you don't sell things, and that's a lot of what Harley's doing. Proposed for the next few years too is to grow as a company and change their brand a little bit in other areas and bring in new riders. Your other option is just to trade in your 18 for a 19. <laughs> I guess if you got the money, you go ahead and do that. I won't be doing that, but uh, the other option, I guess, is you can get one of the stage kits, you know, get a stage three yeah, or a stage four right. kit or something like that. So, all right, what else is new here? So I know the, the infotainment center is new. There's a little display over here of the infotainment center. Have you had a chance to mess around with this infotainment system yet? I watched Matt mess around with it. Um, as a matter of fact, Diff it's Different Matt. Yeah, different Matt. Um, motor company Matt, not <laughs> not Laidlaw Harley, Matt. Um, he uh, walked me through it for a video I just posted this morning at the time of filming. Um, so he runs through a bunch of the new features um, really well. Like what you're looking at right now is just how easy single touches get you through everything you need to instead of the multiple menus that you used to have to go through. Um, the the software looks brand new. Is, is that, do you know if that's the case? It is, it's, um, the software is different. There's so, for um, people that actually update their own radios, they're really pushing software updates this year. So I'm actually gonna end up with another USB device so that I can update both types of radios. Um, they have a different numbering system. The, I think the biggest thing to me is well, the Gorilla Glass, the fact that it, it's like cell phone glass, like what you're used to, high quality. It's not a, a screen protector that flexes when you touch it, like the current 6.5 radio. Mm -hmm. And that's cool. the Apple CarPlay. I mean, that's, I, I can't tell you how many customers I've talked to about their iPhones not working with messages and various things that you want your radio to work with. All that's fixed now. I know the, the probably the biggest question we're going to get is, hey, can you retrofit this radio to fit your prior to 19 model year stuff? The answer is no. I asked the guy that immediately, and they said due to some technical stuff, which he didn't want to get into me apparent with well, me, apparently. I know, I know some technical stuff on why it won't fit. It will physically fit. That's why, um, we, have, that's why we have John here today. Yeah. <laughs> it will physically fit, but with the introduction of the CAN bus system, that's how your ECM, BCM, all of your modules, the radio, the speedometer, the TAC, they all communicate with the CAN bus system. They're also all linked to a VIN number. So the fact that the radio is part of the CAN bus system, it links to a VIN number that won't work with a previous VIN number than 2019. So John, we don't want anybody else to hear us talk about this, but do you think that they don't allow the radio to retrofit back to old models as a means to make you buy a new Harley Davidson? I don't know. I think that um, I think there's a ton of R and D that goes into stuff. Well, I talked to some, the Screaming Eagle guys earlier about um, like certain kits not fitting certain models and the only reason why it's listed as not to fit is because they haven't done it themselves they absolutely will not say that something works unless they have physically made it work and tested it so i think john's volunteering guys i think what we can expect from john in a future video is him retrofitting one of these <laughs> new infotainment systems to an old model bike an 18 to 14 model year bike so I think, I think he just volunteered that. that if, if exactly I, right. And after I waste about half a day <laughs> doing that, I'll also be applying at Laidlaw's Harley. <laughs> I'll be needing a new yeah. <laughs> You're welcome anytime, brother. <laughs> yeah, I, I, as many of you know, I bought an 18 Street Glide last year. And um, sorry about the camera work, by the way, guys. If, um, I bought an 18 Street Glide last year, and I saw this infotainment system. and. If it, if it can fit, if it's a, if there's a possibility of it fitting, I definitely want it for my bike. It's that good, but there's a million things that are you know variables as to whether or not this will will fit, which John knows more about than I do. But yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. Well, like I've been eyeballing a 2018 or an M8 Softail for quite a while, and I'll be honest, the new radio has me thinking touring bike. Dang. I think the prices though. 
which is probably, that's why I'm still thinking about touring bikes. I haven't looked at prices yet. <laughs> that's pretty huge. Will we see a new bike reveal from John Maxwell this year? Will we see it? If, if you guys we'll want to see, see it. it. No promises on when you'll see it, but <laughs> you'll see it. Let us know in the comments below what bike you think John should buy this year. All right, guys? That'll be a good one. It might I'll be checking those comments out. <laughs> all right, so we're going to wrap this up here pretty soon, I think. But what, uh, what else is new this year that we haven't covered? Um, I really like the parts collections. We'll go over to the parts collections, guys. So I think we covered pretty much the main new stuff on the new bikes. Again, I apologize about the terrible video, guys. We're like totally on the fly here. So yeah, mechanically, that's pretty much everything there is, the new bike. They do have two new really cool parts collections this year. I think they're called Dominion. And Kahuna. Kahuna, thank you, yes. All right, John is mixing and matching some of the stuff on here. <laughs> Sign me up. So this is the Dominion collection, guys. Pick and choose your style. This is pretty cool. Uh, it kind of gives you an opportunity to really customize the colors of everything on your bike. So we got, we're looking at a derby cover here, right? Mm -hmm. Derby cover. You can, you basically pick your color between the gloss black or the bronze, and then you pick the color of your inserts to match the paint of your bike or whatever theme you want to go with. So. I mean, ultimately, every bike is different. It's offered in derby cover, transmission side cover, cam cover, footboards, shifter pegs, grips. The new mirrors for the Dominion collection are awesome. Absolutely awesome. I've noticed they're using a lot more of this like brass stuff that kind of matches the heat shields on the new Fat Bob. Well, these don't come apart. Uh, yeah. So. You know, it can be all bronze. This like, piece comes off, right? Yeah, so this piece would come off. It's just not magnet like that display. And you could make it the bronze or what have you. Same with this brake pedal. That piece will come off to match your engine or the other chassis stuff you've chosen. The grips are actually rubber here. You know, I swear I saw a set that was all bronze too. We're about to go on a hunt for that. Because hmm. it seems like that might change colors. I want to show you guys a couple of these these bikes uh, that have this new stuff on them. They're pretty trick looking. So, yeah, I mean, you, you really, in the past, I feel like Harley Davidson has let you have play with uh, different parts like your, your bars, your chrome front end, the finish on your heat shields, your wheels. <laughs> But now I, I feel like Harley Davidson's doing more stuff with like the, the finish on your casings, like all the covers on your engine. So I, I feel like you have a lot more options with that type of stuff. Instead of just either chrome or black, now you have you know even more ways to kind of customize the bike. Check this fat bottom. Yeah. This is probably the, my favorite one here. So this a really is use, a really good use of the color options with that with the bronze and the black inserts on an already aggressive bike just makes this one really pop. This thing's sick. All right, guys, so I think, there you go. Oh, we yeah. should have been standing here the yeah. whole time. I found a step. <laughs> John is as tall as me now. Actually, I think I'm still taller than you. Nah, bro. <laughs> so I think we're gonna sign out here, guys. The battery's about dead on my camera, but uh, great meeting you, John. Yeah, man. And uh, hopefully we need more collaborations in the future. We don't live exactly close to each other. We live about as far away from each other as we could. In the country, yeah, that's about true. <laughs> so, um, again, thanks for watching, guys. I was happy to be able to take you guys into the dealer show this year. And if you're looking for my videos coming up on the, the Model 19 year with the new models and, you know, the, the FX DR and, and everything else we're going to do this year. We're going to do a lot of custom bikes this year as well. If you haven't already, guys, check out John Maxwell's channel. I'm going to link. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description and in this video to John Maxwell's channel. One of the things that I don't always do on my channel that could be better is talk about the mechanical side. I'm not a technician. John is, and so if you're looking for a technician's perspective, hit him up. I always get a lot of questions about, you know, changing oil and, and this technical issue with the engine. I'm okay with that stuff, but. John, that's what he does every day. He's, he's the expert of that stuff. So definitely check out his channel and subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys. Any final words, John? Um, thanks for having me, guys. Check out my channel. 
hit subscribe on that so you don't miss out on well all the information that's coming out right now. And we'll see you all in the next one. All right, later guys.